Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Denise Lawrence of Lawrence Lobstock. Welcome, Denise. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you for being on the show. So tell Thank us about. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no, I, I'm so happy you're here. Um, tell us about Lawrence Lovestock. Okay, so Lawrence Lovestock is a petting rescue farm located on the windward side of Oahu. And um, we, we're just a small little um, family operation. And we basically have taken in many animals that were, um, we re rescued them from slaughter. They were surrendered to us, um, abandoned. Um, some from some great families that just could not lo no longer take care of the animals. The majority of them have been with us since the very beginning. So we're going on five years with most of them. And they've all come to us as, as young animals, um, like six months to one year, and, and have grown with us. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about for us. It's just a petting rescue farm. A lot of work, but then when we have visitors that come, it's so rewarding seeing the children and, and, and the parents I'm laughing and giggling, having a good time. So tell us, how did you get involved with rescuing animals? Oh, it's so funny. That really wasn't anything that was on my radar that I was going to be doing, but um, it happened one animal at a time, to tell you the truth. And we started with a mindset of teaching our grandchildren responsibility, and then it just continued to grow from there. And then their friend, my children's friends would come over and barbecue, and then they would have kids, and then they would bring their friends, and it just kind of grew from there. And um, we just took them in one animal at a time until we don't have vacancies. So. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the first animal. Who was your who was your first animal that you rescued? In? Our very first animal was um, gosh, three of them kind of came around the same month. So let me think. Peppa sure, sure. Pig. Awesome. Yeah, Peppa was one week old. Yeah. She she could fit. I could carry her like this. Now she's six hundred and fifty pounds. Oh wow. Yeah, she was one of the first. There were three of them that kind of came in the same month. Then we had Yahweh, the, the sheep. My son wanted to surprise me because I always said, wouldn't it be cool to have a baby lamb? And uh -huh. um, so he was a St. Croix ram. Still, we bottle fed him. And then the other one was MJ, the goat. So he's a miniature pygmy goat. And he's really tiny and small, but he's, he, he walks around like he's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Michael, can you go to the website? There's some pictures of the animals, I think, like Peppa and everything. Um, thank you. Well, so, and then did people just start bringing you other animals because they knew you had? Yeah, throughout the years, we would just get a lot of phone calls, emails, text messages, people just showing up. And, um, you know, the stories were just very similar, very sad. and. Um, but when we could take in, we we took in. And we we probably this year, 2023, we did still take in a couple more. Um, we're pretty much at capacity right now because we really want to give them a, a quality life yes. and um, keep them healthy. So we've had to had to manage that. But we get calls every week still to this day. People are always looking for um, oh, of a home for their animals, yes. And have you always loved animals? Is that what inspired you to do this? I've always loved dogs. Like I've always had a dog in my life. And it's funny because um, I was very, very afraid of anything with, with wings, like <laughs> a bird, you know, anything like that. And it, I was raised in Iowa and um, somebody told me, watch out, a bat's going to fly in your hair. And I'm like, what? And that scared me. And like that, I carried that, carried that out all the way through until I started this farm. And then um, we got hens. And I, my, my grandson said, here, Grandma, hold this hen. And I'm like, no, I was so frightened. And we had, this was just before we started the farm. I'm like, no, I'm so, I'm scared. He's like, no, Grandma, it's okay. Well, that hen is still with me today. And so that was <laughs> six years ago. And she, she's yeah. a big, beautiful buff Orpington. Um, wow. So I have, I have lots of feathered friends now, and I'm not afraid of them at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you say started the farm but hasn't the land been with your family for generations yes it actually has so my great-grandparents purchased this property 22 and a half acres in 1917 and wow. so um, my mother was raised as a farm farmer girl and <laughs> this entire land was actually farmland 
So her family was known for their cattle, their pigs, and their lo'i. So they, they raised taro. And so exactly where my farm is right now is where all their milking cows were at and their water buffalo. And I never knew any of that until I started my farm. I think maybe my mom didn't think that was something we really cared about learning or knowing about. So, so much history has come out about the way my mother was raised, the way her, her parents and her grandparents um, tilled the land. You know, yeah. that all came out and I learned about all of that since starting my farm. So what, I mean, so your mother was raised here and then how did she, how did you get to Iowa, I guess? So I'm actually a military brat. My dad is a retired <laughs> command sergeant major in the Marine Corps. So I was raised all across the U.S. And then upon becoming an adult, I came to Hawaii. And then we learned about, you know, Kahalu and we came here and we were just like, oh, mom, my mom never told us about, you know, her upbringing. Um, I'm not, I think it was just, she was trying to protect herself from missing home so much. Um, but now we've got five generations. Like my mom, me. We have four generations living on on this property now. Wow, that's wonderful. So yeah. what, what happened with the farm while your mother was away? Who was taking care of the farm? So it kind of, when my, my mother's generation, so her and her brother, she was the only girl, and then her cousins, they all had to work the land. Like they didn't go to prom. They didn't, they couldn't play football. <laughs> they couldn't do any of that. They had to, they had to work the land and they had to milk cows in the morning. And they had to milk cows at night and they did the whole thing. So their farm was a little different. I'm a rescue farm. We're not going to eat any of our animals. They're here <laughs> as pets and they're going to live out their lives here. But they actually raised um, l livestock. I got I to gotta remember livestock. They raised animals for their food and they lived off the land. So when they all became 18, they all joined the military and left Hawaii, I guess, to you know, leave the whole farming life. And um, eventually they all slowly came back home and um, have all been around here. Yeah. Nice, nice. And then how did you, so you, you said you went to Kahalu and you decided that, did you just fall in love and decide that you wanted to stay and have a farm? So when I first came to Hawaii, I didn't have my family at that time. And I really didn't actually see an interest originally. And then when I got married and had my children, my brothers got married, had their children. And because we were never a raised around cousins, it was only just me and my brothers. To have our children all raised together was something really special to us. So all of our children were raised together here on the property like brothers and sisters. And um, they all kind of went their own ways and, you know, are living all across the, the world, actually, <laughs> right now. And slowly, they're all coming back, too. So, um I raised my children here. My children were born and raised here in Hawaii and were raised here in Kahalu. And um, I've never left. They all have left, gone to school, gone and did their careers. And then now they're coming back. Their children are now around here. And so their children are really the purpose of how we started the farm. And, um, and everybody's hand is in, in the plow for, with this farm. Mm-hmm. So when you say hand in the plow, like, I mean, it's mostly a rescue petting farm. So are people mostly taking care of the animals or do you have any crops you're growing? What kind of things are you doing on the farm besides the animals? Anything? Okay. Yeah. So, so Lawrence Lovestock is strictly animals and um, the day-to-day -day routine, I handle that. But any type of projects, any type of repairs, any big things, then my kids kick in. My grandkids, when they're out of school or they're not doing any sports things, then they, they contribute as well. Now, here on our property, I told you, you know, we have a lot of acreage. Um, my great-grandparents, my grandparents, and my parents have all planted trees and fruits all over the, the property. So we all get the benefit of that. And plus, too, a lot of our visitors too, do, too. So when we have, crop, when we have like uh, an abundance of fruits, because we've got about 50 different fruits that's growing here. Um, we share them. We'll put them out and we share with everybody. I mean, we've got bananas. We've got mango, coconut, lychee, oranges, lemons, limes, avocados. I'm trying to, um, lily koi. Um, probably just about every fruit that I'm not even thinking about right now. But yeah, so we've always got an abundance of fruits here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you said, so your um, family, your ancestors, they were growing cows to, you know, obviously for slaughter or whatever. So how did that, I mean, now that your, these animals are your pets, like, I mean, did that change your view about 
you know, what you like, how, how did it affect you? I guess yeah, it doesn't, you know, I, we're not vegetarians. Um, but we just like these particular animals, we know their purpose. Their pur- purpose is to, to bring joy and happiness to children and families and to teach them to be brave and kind. Um, and that was just something that really kind of sparked in my spirit about our farm and what we were going to be about. And I made a commitment to everybody that brought their, their animals here. And I made a commitment to the animals that kind of just got dropped off to us, that they're going to live out the rest of their life here. And we we're going to do everything we could to keep them happy and healthy. Mm-hmm. But we don't, we, you know, it's, and it's funny because like when my mom's up on the farm, um, she gets to share her story and her mana'o and what she did when she was a little girl and how she handled animals and how it's so much different from us. But people love to hear the story. You know, we've never had somebody come and think, what you ate, you, you have cows here and pigs here and you ate them. You know, everybody loves to hear that old stories from back before. Um, so how about, um, I know I was reading on your website, actually, that you also um, have some special needs children going to your farm as well. Yes. Is that a particular thing, or how does that work? So um, actually, we've had some, some really um, wonderful experiences with that. When they come to the farm, many times they'll email us first to give us a heads up, and we do everything we can to accommodate. Um, when we do events on the outside, um, we've done a lot of like Easter events and mall presentation events. And when we see a special needs child, we reach out to them and we make th- we make a way for them. We'll bring them in closer. We'll move fences. We'll do whatever we've got to do to allow that child to touch the animal or to allow the animal to smell the child. We, we, all, we're, we love doing that. Like that's something really uh, special to us and really big in our heart. Yeah, that's great. So um, how did you decide to, to be open to that? I mean, was that just something that you always wanted to do? or? Um... I think that we've all, my, my children, my husband and I, I think that we've all kind of had a gifting of being able to um, not be afraid of, of children like that or adults or elderly people. And... Um, it's just it, it's just something that naturally comes up and out of us to to recognize that and and make them feel comfortable and not and, and make them feel like, you know, they're they don't have to stay back because they're in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. You know, no, we're going to move the fence and we're going to get you at just as close as we can. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So, Michael, why don't we run through some of the photos that she has right now? How about this photo? Uh-huh. Tell us about this one. So this is two of our horses. Um, this is my son on on the um, the bay horse. That's the brown horse, and um, that's myself on Saint. So they both um, were surrendered to our farm different times, and um, Saint is the white horse. So he that's that's like my baby, and um, so yeah, we we went into. I never thought I'd get to animals this big, and it and it happened, and. Um, we're learning. We've got we've got a couple of great instructors and equestrian people that are are work, walking us through everything, and so um, we ride in parades now. Our horse, so the brown horse, his name is Sergeant Major. He's going to be in his first parade for Prince Kuhio. That's going to be coming up in a couple of months, or one month. And then um, Saint has just been in many many parades mm-hmm. already since being with us. So, you know, like you were saying, you never thought you would get into animals this big. How did you even learn about the animals? Because, I mean, there's a lot of things to learn about the care of different animals, especially if you're not used to taking care of them. Did you pick up a book? It was just word of mouth. Um, Do you have a vet that you use? Yeah, so we do have, we have a vet that comes to the farm. Um, Her name is Dr. Jenna Wallace, and she comes and um, assists us with anything that we need vet attention to. Um, and as far as like the care of the different animals, you know, when I go, when I would initially go into the feed store to buy their feed and I would see someone else that's buying the same type of feed, I'd say, oh, hey, you have rabbit? Oh, and then we'd just talk and then I would ask questions. And then, then it just kind of just became instinctive. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the big one was the turkeys. We, we met a young guy in the, in the feed store and he was buying turkey food. And we're like, hey, so you have a turkey? Well, today he's like one of my, one of my greatest volunteers and um, he sticks around with us. Yeah. Yeah. So we, 
volunteers that nice yes we have a great we have a volunteer team of about 75 people wow and what kind of stuff do they do is it mostly feeding the animals so i um i'm super flexible i don't do like the volunteer day thing um because i'm retired i let them come whenever it's convenient for them unless there's there's something going on like a private party or whatnot but we've never really had any conflict and i really gear it towards what you know how old they are like let's say it's a mom and she's got two little two-year-olds or three-year-olds they can't really do big stuff so i'll have them do things like um fill up the duck water fill up the goat's water you know um shoot down the pig pens the things that like that would be a lot of fun and interactive for that age and then i might have like a i've had where it's a group of cousins i think there's six cousins and two moms and there's some some things that need to get done, like folding up um, feed bags that I just don't have time to get to. But then the kids love to sit there and do that. Like that's super fun for them. Another big thing is cleaning bunny cages. Um, that's probably the biggest um, job on the farm, believe it or not. <laughs> Why is <laughs> that? Are you messy or? <laughs> I'm just a I'm a meticulous person, and I don't like I clean buddy cages every week. <laughs> so yeah, that's a big one, and I um it's it's a lot of fun for families to do because they're, they're you know usually parents are looking for um opportunities that they can do hands on things with their children, and so we've got a lot of that around here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So let's continue with the photos, Michael. Okay. Next one. So this is um the picture of Saint and um at the that's what you, you were talking yep, about. Yeah, that's Saint, beautiful Saint. He is just, I don't know, he just turns magical when he gets into the parade mode. And right here he's actually um carrying um the queen of Aloha Week 2023. So that was a huge honor for us for him to have been selected to do that. How old is Saint? Saint is 11 years old. What was the story behind how Saint got? So Saint was um, a horse in a, a stable. He wasn't mistreated or abused at all, but he was just kind of like just there and really didn't serve a purpose, um, wasn't being ridden much, things like that. And then through um, the person that was that got me connected to horses, um, that's how Saint came to the farm. And Saint was going to have a purpose that he was going to um, meet children and get fed carrots and Wonderful. take pictures. And that would be it. So that's where we thought it was going to end for him. Huh. But then, you know, he became so healthy. And I think that the confidence from being around all the visitors, just uh -huh. he started to glow. Oh, wow. He just started to glow. He became so beautiful. And then um, he got asked to be in his first parade. And when he did his first parade, when, when the parade was over and we were ready to trailer him back up, we got bombarded with people wanting to use him for the next parades coming up. Nice. So he's, he's, been in, he's been in four parades and he's confirmed for three more that's coming up. So Prince Kuhio, King Kamehameha Day, and Aloha Week 2024. So I'm going to actually be writing him in Aloha Week 2024. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. How about the other horse, Sergeant Major? So Sergeant Major is a very big horse. So what happened was I got, I was just on my phone one night and I get this pop-up message if I wanted a horse. Now, by this time, I know a lot more about horses. I know what kind of questions to ask. And, um, you know, I reached out to my children and they said, yeah, mom, let's do it. And um, he was underweight. He was having some hoof problems, things like that. We had to invest a lot of money in getting him healthy again. But he's healthy. He looks good. Um, and my son wanted to name him after my dad. My dad's a retired Sergeant Major in the Marine Corps. <laughs> so that's how he got his name, Sergeant Major. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> okay, let's do the next photo, Mike. Okay, so, so this is one of our visitors. And that's our sheep. She's feeding, I think that's kale. If I remember correctly, she told me, I have, I have kale. How do you know? And they want to know how to feed it. But you know, our animals are so good. They can eat vegetables or fruit out of children's hands without hurting the children. They know how to do it. They know how to be hand fed. So that's what she's doing. She's feeding, um, that looks like Rudy. She's feeding Rudy some kale. 
from her hand. <laughs> yeah. How do you get all so that's really vegetables? cute. What was that? How do you get all your vegetables? Is that donated or is it stuff that you grow? So the way, so they do get a lot of what we grow, um, whether it's mountain apple, mango, papaya, they, whatever we're, we grow here, they get. Um, but when you sign up to come and visit, then if you feeding is an op is optional, but we, we tell them that it's the best part of the, the kids experience. And if they do want to feed, then they just need to bring fresh produce. Oh, cool. That's great. Um, next uh, slide, Michael. How about this picture? So this is our goats. Um, that is ledger right there on top of that fence. This is how they greet our visitors. They're like, here I am. <laughs> I'm right here. You can feed me. You can feed me. But they could very easily jump over that fence, but they don't do it because that's their safety net. They love being in there and they'll just climb right on top to, to greet all the visitors. <laughs> that's great. You can go to the next one, Michael. So this is, um, this is Beacon and Beacon has a very, um, very sweet story. He's one of our, our, um, actually Easter this year will make one year since we've had him. So um, he's actually a very small pig. I'm puzzled about that because he's not growing. He didn't grow very big. Oh, really? wow. And yeah, he's going to be too pretty soon. Well, what happened was um, a lady reached out to me and I said, you know, I'm, you know, I get this call. I get calls all the time for pigs. And I said, I'm so sorry. We don't have vacancies. I, you know, in my head, I've been telling myself, telling my heart, if you take more, you're going to, you're going to devalue the quality of life for the ones you have and I just said no and then somehow that person got in touch with somebody that knew somebody in my family and that person called me <laughs> and I said I said I don't have vacancies this is my cousin Rhonda I said I don't have vacancies Rhonda she's like so say no <laughs> I don't have vacancies and then I don't know I just said well is he neutered will she neuter him and then that's how that all came about and we brought him in and then one day she she came to one of our events in Milani, the, the owner, and she brought us goodies and stuff. And, and she said, one day I want to sit down with you and I want to tell you how Beacon saved my life. And I said, I would love to hear that. Yeah. So he came to us. He came to us. His name was Bacon. And I said, oh, no, the, in, the inquisitive children are going to ask me if I'm going to eat him. So we changed his name to Beacon. I figured, OK, Beacon is a great name for him because we gave him hope. You know, we, we gave him a chance at life. So, yeah. so he, he's beacon. Yeah. So how did he save her life? You know, I didn't get into the story with her, but I think she was going through, from what I understood, uh, depression. And yeah. um, so he was like a comfort animal or, for her. Yeah. So he's like our, amb he's our ambassador. Uh -huh. So when you come to the farm, he's walking around and he, he's, he walks freely while, I, while I'm out, he's out. <laughs> and when he sees cars come, he goes right up into the parking lot and greets you right at your door. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And he that's follows cool. the kids all over. And then if I sense that a visitor is scared of him, then I will put him in his pen. But for the most part, he's always out. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, let's go to the next slide, Michael. How about this? So that is actually Saint and Sergeant Major's um, stables, but they're at, um, they're at a ranch right now. So we put the cows in there in one side and probably the sheep are on the other side. Nice. And that's just, that's, that's basically, they're feeding those people there. That's all of our guests and they're feeding all the animals. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's go to the website, Michael. Show like just scroll down because she has some pictures of the other animals, like the, um, the pup of the pig. So as Peppa when Peppa was a kid, I guess, or a, not a kid, it's a baby, a piglet, big baby pig, piglet. <laughs> um, and then um, I see there's others. Can you scroll down a little bit? There's a parrot too. Can yes, parrot? we actually have five parrots. Wow, I think yes, be so beautiful. They're wow. very talkative. So the the two the, the one that you see there, there's two of them, and they are almost in their forties. So those two parrots um, were actually my parents' parrots. When my, pa my dad passed away, they came up here to live with me. So they were here before the farm started, and they only speak and sing Hawaiian. Oh, how cute is that? Yeah. That's cute. 
What's beautiful is that they weren't very um, sociable before, but now with the farm, because they see so many people and they hear so many sounds, they talk, they're very talkative now. <laughs> That's so yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's go down a little bit. I want to see, like, she has some pictures of the turkey. I'm interested in the turkeys. Yes, we have two. Um, they're called Royal Palm Turkeys. Mm -hmm. And um, we're very blessed because the two males live together in the same yard, the mm -hmm. same enclosure, and they get along just fine. Yeah. So that when if you gobble at them, they'll gobble back. We they always tell the kids. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll tell the kids what what sound does a turkey make, and then they'll they'll do it, and then the turkeys will go gobble 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 back at them. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did the turkeys come to you? Somebody had pet turkeys, or were they going for slaughter? Or? So, one of our turkeys, um, we got that turkey from the feed store, mm -hmm. and then we actually had a male and a female raise them together, and then um, one the one day the turkey got scared off. And he took oh. off walking, took off running and we couldn't find him. But I said, you know, I don't think he, I don't think he got hurt because there's no feathers anywhere. He didn't get hurt. So maybe he's just hiding. Oh. So remember I told you about the gentleman that we met in the feed store and we, we said, oh, yeah. hey, you got a turkey. OK, yeah. so I called him and I said, hey, my chongi is missing. What do you think I should do? You have any suggestions? He said, hey, you know what? I'll bring my turkey there. And because oh. usually what, what it'll do is it'll draw him back because you know they're territorial so my turkey was gone for like two weeks I was, we were so sad because we've had him for like almost five years and then he brought the turkey over uh, within 24 hours our turkey came back it's so cool and yeah so and we couldn't believe there? it my brother calls and he goes he calls me on the phone because he was down on the other end of the property uh -huh. and he said chongi's here and my two grandsons said what they got up and they just ran and ran and got him and carried him and brought him back up to the farm I mean, he's like a lot of his feathers were missing and he looked skinny, but we brought him back up to health again. And then the other turkey, he just, the, the gentleman just left him with us and we're like, okay, well, we've got to figure out a way to make these guys get along. Uh -huh. And so we had them separated because we didn't want anybody to hurt, you know, they, we didn't want them hurting each other. And then one night we heard some noise down at the farm, at the back end of the farm. So my husband went to go look and the turkey, the new turkey was inside the yard with the old turkey and they were fine and getting along. And so we're like, okay. And we're like, and actually that was such a blessing because it was so hard keeping them separated. Yeah. Right. With, with turkeys, you can put two turkeys on opposite sides of the fence and they will follow and mirror each other mm. 10 hours, eight hours, however long you allow them to, they will not stop. They will just keep pacing back and forth, back and forth, gobbling at each other. <laughs> and that what they're basically doing is trying to establish dominance. Ah, yeah. They don't actually fight, though. They, they fight. would if you put them together and they weren't ready for that. They ah. would. Yes. But that's good. Yours get along. At least. Yeah, yeah. And again, that wasn't something that I learned in a textbook or I read online. It was just, you know, as the years have gone on, instinct just has kicked in. And I've seen instinct just work favorably along the way. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So if people want to visit the farm, how can they go about doing that? Do you have set hours? Do they email you? We do have set hours and you would book that on our website. Now, if you want to visit on the same day that you, you know, you're inquiring, then you would just call the number or email the, the farm's email address. Because we do do same day visits. Um, we don't allow visits to be booked on the website on the same day because there's just so much involved in you know, preparing you for your visit and getting that kind of information out to you. Um, it's better to, to speak to us in person on the same day. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. It's been so informative and fun. And, um, you know, we're so happy to have you on the show, but we have to. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. No, oh, it was wonderful. It's so, it sounds like so much fun. <laughs> and, and, and remember, they're not livestock, they're love stock because they love feed stock. your soul, not your body. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love that. <laughs> so I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on Think Tech Hawaii. We've been talking with Denise Lawrence of, of Lawrence Lovestock. Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed the coverage and the conversation, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel on Think Tech.
you sign up for our email advisories and get a complete listing of our shares or make a donation and keep us going, visit our website, thinktechhawaii.com. We'll be back in two weeks, so please tune in and tell your friends to tune in. Then check out the website at gracenhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my show guests. Thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone.